Kira, can you uh, share the slide again? Okay, thank you. Okay, Prof. Kapagash. Okay, Prof. Pakash, shall we get started? Uh, you are muted. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sure. It's time then. Uh, go ahead. Should we begin? Yes, we can. Okay. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. Uh, today, uh, we have uh, our uh, eighth Art and Talk uh, webinar in series. Uh, it's really a wonderful that uh, the committee, the team, you know, has uh, conducted successfully seven uh, webinars today is the eighth one uh, you know it's 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 uh, art and talk is 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 one of the uh, new initiative uh, you know art and uh, uh, for this year uh, we initiated this webinar series called art and talk and the tagline uh, for art and talk is fixed is in pursuit of the excellence uh, it's a very well described purpose of the initiative to achieve the excellence through gaining and sharing the knowledge Art and Talk is jointly efforts of Art and Industry Relations Committee, Art and Professional Activities Committee, Art and Young Professional Committee, and Art and Women Engineering Committee, and Art and Student Activity Committee. So right from the first session of the Art and has been a big hit to the large number of IT members registering to attend the webinar. All talks are delivered by eminent speakers via WebEx and are also live streamed on the social media. The talks are also recorded and made available on our 10 YouTube channels. And so those uh, who miss can, you know, uh, listen these uh, these uh, talks. So let's begin. Uh, and I now uh, I'm going to uh, welcome our, uh, you know, Dr. Amit Kumar. He is uh, going to give his uh, you know inauguration talk for this uh, webinar. Dr. Amit Kumar, he's an IT, art and I to plea chair for section and chapter committee. Uh, by professional, he is a, a DNA forensic professional. It's, it's a very, you know, complex, uh, you know, area he have opted. I don't know how. In entrepreneur, engineers, and bioinformaticians, and IT volunteers. In 2005, he founded the first private DNA testing company, BioAxis. DNA Research Center uh, Limited in Hyderabad, India, with the U.S. collaboration. He has a vast experience of training of 1,000-plus crime investigation officers and helped 750 plus criminal and non-criminal cases to reach the justice by offering an analytical services in his laboratory. His group also works extensively on genetic uh, predispositions, risk studies of cancer and has been helping any cancer patients from 2012 to fight and win the battle against the cancer. Amit Kumar was a member of IEEE Strategic Development and Environmental Assessment Committee of IEEE MGA. He is a senior member of IEEE and has been a very active IEEE volunteer at section, council, region, technical societies, of computational intelligence, and engineering in medicines and biology, and at IEEE MGA level in several capacities. 
is a driven number of IEEE conferences and leadership. They're very active and dynamic IEEE volunteers. I request Dr. Amit Kumar, please uh, you know, give your welcome address. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Prakash, for uh, uh, the wonderful start and uh, such a nice introduction. In fact, uh, uh, it is uh, a privilege for uh, uh, all of us to uh, be the part of this art and talk, the ten talk, and as rightly mentioned, that this talk has definitely gained a lot of attention from the recent ten members, and uh, specifically in the challenging times like this, this has been a quite engaging activity and uh, a great example for collaboration between several committees of, of uh, a variety of reason 10. So, so I thank uh, all uh, the uh, organizers of the 10 talk for uh, having me here today and it is a great privilege for me to, uh, uh, to be introducing the uh, speaker of the day today. Before that, I really thank uh, all our art and colleagues, Amy, Prasant, uh, uh, Akila, Renu, uh, uh, Michael Long, and all, all those uh, people who have been the backbone for towards the art and talk. So without taking much time, I uh, definitely want to to uh, give the uh, ballot uh, to the speaker. Before that, I will uh, just go and uh, 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 read the bio of the speaker. So uh, I went through the like uh, uh, LinkedIn profile of, of uh, uh, Albert, and uh, I found that uh, he. He is also an active volunteer of IEEE. He, he is from my own uh, IEEE Competition Intelligence Society. And uh, he, uh, he has a lot of acquaintance uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the chapter subcommittee, with the YP committee, and the webinar subcommittee as well. So it is great to have you, uh, Albert, today. And uh, today, uh, uh, Albert is going to cover a very important uh, topic that is AI empowered uh, uh, tech. And it is, as, as mentioned by uh, Dr. Prakash in the beginning, also, it is uh, one of the very important and uh, upcoming AI, specifically in the financial uh, sector. And uh, we all all are looking forward to all the uh, advancements and the utilization and the implementation, how this technology is being utilized and how it is impacting the financial world. So, Albert uh, YSLAM received uh, the B engineering degree that was first class of course in information, in, uh, information engineering and the PhD degree in electric in electronic engineering from the University of Hong Kong, Hong Kong, in 2005 and 2010. He was a postdoctoral scholar at the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Sciences of the University of California, Berkeley, US, in 2010 and 2010 to 2012. Now he is the Chief Scientist and the Chief Technology Officer at Fanula Labs and an adjunct professor at the Department of Electrical and Engineering of uh, HKU. He is a Croucher Research Fellow. His research interests uh, include optimization theory and algorithms, artificial intelligence, smart grid, and a smart city. He has been uh, in, involved with IEEE uh, as, as a volunteer in several capacities. He was the associate editor of IEEE Transaction on Transaction Trans 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 Trans
So thank you for this opportunity and you welcome it and all that all our collection. Thank you. So now I'll do this in uh, asking. Yeah, well, Akira, thank, you. Yeah. Um, thank you for the introduction and uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, cool. So uh, let me share my deck first. Can you see my deck? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, it is visible. Okay, so um, thank you for your introduction. It's very, I'm very glad to be invited to give a talk in the out in out and talk and. Uh, so I'm happy to share what we're doing in Hong Kong with the Vec Tech. So, um, so let me let me start. So basically, um, we are um, we're getting more and more regulation in the world, particularly in the uh, finance industry. Um, when in, the, in in this time, trying to talk about how we can make use of AI to empower the Vec Tech, something with that we may hard to do in the past. Then the AI can talk a lot and then save a lot of time and cost. So the, um, I'll try to explain to in the um, final left perspective. I know it's the place I'm working right now. Um, I'm gonna share how we provide some solution to um, enable RecTech with AI. So I should miss some slides. Okay, cool. So this is today's outline. First, I will try to introduce RecTech for those, uh, particularly for those who do not have any idea about RecTech. And, uh, and then I'll try to introduce uh, Venno Labs. And then I'll try to do, um, explain what the technology we have developed and relied on, and how to use the technology to um, build up the solution for RecTech. So basically, this is the outline of today. Okay, the first part. RecTech. So as the name implied, RecTech uh, is a short form for regulatory technology. This is mainly for um, regulation, compliance. Basically, this term was first coined by the UK government office for science in, um, in their 2015 FinTech Futures report. So RecTech is basically made focus on using technology, particular on information technology IT to ensure compliance with uh, monitoring and reporting on regulatory requirement. So basically people try to put RecTech under FinTechs. So FinTechs, I know everybody know about FinTech, but uh, RecTech is kind of new, it's a branch of FinTech. Um, we focus a lot on the regulatory monitoring, reporting and compliance and um, traditionally, we rely a lot on manual input, manual reporting, manual compliance processes did create a lot of problems. And the whole process is also very slow. And right now, we try to digitize everything. This enable we can use IT or particularly AI to help in this kind of process. Through RecTech, regulatory processes can be automated and compliance with regulations can be guaranteed. Um, this will be achieved through the entity-wide standardization of processes and the implementation of control framework provided by the regulatory experts. Um, RecTech's objectives have the, uh, are in four four. The first one try to enhance uh, transparency and consistency. Previously, we do manually on compliance, uh, we rely on the expert, right? Sometimes it's not very transparent. We are not doing, actually understand what a pe these two people are doing. And uh, the standard also vary from one people to another people. But using technology is a third part thing Then whenever someone using it, they always give you the similar or same results. So this can enhance transparency and consistency. We um, also aim to standardize the regulatory processes because when trying to describe and teach the computer using AI how to use the rec tag, basically we try to standardize the processes and it will minimize the variation between the people's understanding on the um, ambiguous regulations statements. 
And um, because we're using machine, using uh, this will also provide high level quality at lower cost. With machine, uh, it can work 24 seven and um, it always have a lower cost, induced lower cost than operate by human only. So let me explain the rise of Rectech. Basically, um, it comes from two main reasons. One is on the global financial crisis. So I guess uh, most people know uh, what's happening in 2000, uh, 2007, 2008. Um, there are the, um, uh, great uh, uh, global financial crisis, had a lot of GDP drop, and many people lose their job. And then the housing prices drop a lot. And then the housing price is also have uh, much affected. In fact, um, it's actually uh, some um, land related to some lending process. Um, there's some the excessive risk taking by the global financial some institutions, and um, there's also bursting of some housing bubbles. This all cultivated the um, perfect storm of global financial crisis. Many people believe that. This is mainly caused by the deregulation in the financial industry. So if we have more regulation, then we can ensure that um, we will uh, try to minimize the chance of having regular uh, global financial crisis. Another reason is on the anti-money uh, laundering uh, uh, scandals. So money laundering is actually the illegal process of making large amount of money generated by some criminal activities. For example, uh, some terrorist funding or job uh, trafficking. And to try to make it more like a, le a legitimate source. So this kind of money come from some criminal activity is considered dirty. And we use some kind of process uh, to make it clean again. So because it's re uh, related to crime and um, People, many financial industry will try to um, exercise some the anti-money laundering process. So that so to identify this kind of money laundering process. And um, in order to do this, you need to understand your customer. So it's so-called the KYC process. Uh, if you understand your customer well as a point of a uh, financial institution, then you make sure you can uh, quite sure that okay, this, this person will not use the money. Uh, from an illegal source and using money in an illegal way. So these two things mainly drive the, uh, um, the tech, uh, rag tech. So um, since 2018, um, we are getting more and more um, regulatory alert. So up to 2019, we reached the level to around uh, 50, uh, 56,000 alerts per year. This is a global alert. So getting, we are somehow getting stable right now, but uh, the alert is very hard. And uh, RegTech involved uh, different parties, including the uh, regulators, um, some financial institutions, some RegTech companies, and some investors as well. So the so regulators uh, always have some form of guidance or initiative which is designed to promote the use of RegTech. And um, over the increasing digitalization uh, is a, it become a trend in financial services industry as well. Um, so regulators have some kind of the regulation that financial institution need to follow. Then sometimes, um, um, they may not have enough expertise uh, in uh, the financial institution. Then this gave rise to some the red tech company who build some solution, just like Panel Labs, and that uh, design some solution for the regulators and also financial institutions to use. And uh, they are also incur a lot of investment on red tech. So let me show you uh, some figures. So in this report, um, you can see that uh, the amount, the deal related to rectech investment, uh, no matter is including the 
venture capital, private uh, equity, the acquisition is a uh, from one forty three rise to one seventy eight and then keep very high. And uh, for two thousand twenty, we only have uh, in this report we show some figure for the first half of the year. So for the number of the deal size, we can reach up to the three or four billion US dollars. So you can see. Um, there's a lot of investment activity related to backtech. So this create also some benefit to the um, giving part as well. For the financial institution, we can try to enhance the risk management because uh, using new technology can better manage a broad range of risk. Um, in fact, the uh, global financial institution have to pay more than the, um, uh, free forty billion dollar in fine and continue to face regulatory penalty related to the lapses of the um, market conducts in the anti monetary laundry in regulation reporting information consumer production as well and using the director they can save up to forty percent of the cost annually to improve the KYC processes and uh, this and also give. Uh, attract and retain customers as well. Because, um, for example, in KYC, they can streamline all this uh, KYC process without uh, asking to some tedious or a long list of questions so that the customer have a better experience. Uh, for customers, they can improve customer experience that I uh, mentioned before. They can also drive some financial inclusion because um, even up to now, certain customer may also still experience some difficulties in trans transaction or opening some account um, due to some kind of concern related to the compliance. And with RegTech, that um, we can collect the uh, alternative data so we can support the customer to make the um, credit risk and the um, improve all the access to the financial services. For the regulators, um, it can reduce risk in the financial system, definitely. And um, in the past, uh, most of the um, uh, supervisory agencies have to collect some data or summarize some data on a periodical paid basis. But with Black Tech, um, data can come in more regularly in a more timely fashion. So again, this can speed up to the regulators respond to changing condition and understanding any going hidden crisis as well. And this and also the, um, and uh, address some minor inconsistency between report between different region. In terms of cities, uh, they can enhance the, the compatibility of the banking section. This make the, the banking sector more healthier without uh, illegal activities, more compliance rate to the rules. And also strengthen the international financial center uh, status and promote innovation technology hub because as a red tag, we use technology is promote technology as well. Okay, let me explain some underlying technology. Um, this first one is relied on uh, cloud computing. Um, right now, the, there is some on demand delivery of IT resources over the internet and uh, typically on computing power on data storage. This also enable financial institutions to operate at a low cost uh, without the need of purchase of maintain equipment and to have greater flexibility to generate and to store, uh, manage and use this data along with the enhanced data security and data protection. The second one is API. API is a um, programming structure, so which, which can facilitate exchange of information and execution ex, uh, instruction between different computing system. Um, this is important because it allows banks or different financial institution to work with third parties. Uh, we have AI. Uh, AI can help optimize the business processes, detect patterns, and uh, general insights, um, engage customer and employee through some communication, 
Um, particularly, AI can also help analyze and interpret data at the large scale in real time as well. It can provide some predictive insight and alert on a timely basis, more competitive, uh, com um, comprehensive read monitoring as well. And, uh, and our technologies on OCRs. Um, before using uh, Vectag, maybe people relied a lot on documents, on papers, and uh, uh, hard copy um, documents. Sometimes uh, we need to extract the information. OCR allow us to extract a document and put it in the digital form. This becomes an enabler to other technology because once we turn everything into digital, it can enhance and enable other underpinned uh, Vectag solution by converting information to data in a, in a better format. Um, another technology is on the IO, um, IoT, Internet of Things. So it enables more real-world data to be collected, interpreted, and used, and uh, improve the productivities, and uh, enhance the monitoring ability in a wide range of processes. Bot train. Blockchain allows to record um, transactions of access, providing some security and uh, auditability trail of information of different assets. So it allows us to encrypt information, uh, make uh, uh, information available in store on multiple server at the same time. Uh, this one is uh, biometrics. Biometrics allows to verify the people's identity um, provide greater security and assurance on the uh, identity verification. This also provide better experience to the to better user experience as well. We got the applications. Um, there are basically six main area of application. Um, the first one is so regulatory compliance and uh, obligations mainly on the how we maintain inventory externally or internally, uh, particularly on governance, risk, and compliance. The second is on the uh, financial crime. So mainly focus on the more we need to buy uh, KYC, uh, um, customer onboarding, customer offboarding, and uh, any money, uh, money laundering. The person conduct and consumer protection mainly try to implement something to, to protect the uh, customer uh, on the data and privacy issues. The fourth one is on the reporting. And uh, you know, uh, for financial institutions, you need to generate a lot of reports. Uh, Vertex can help uh, do the compliance of all these kind of reports. The fifth one is on the risk management. Um, Vertex can help identify uh, risk proactively and reactively so that uh, we can um, improve uh, all, um, all these kind of reassessment process. The sixth is on governance, accountability. It refers to the structure of rules, practices, processes, and responsibility within an organization. And um, previously, people do all these kind of risk identification uh, reactively, but with RECTAC, we can make it proactive. So I don't go through the all the details here. Um, in this figure, they try to show uh, some vector implementation in Hong Kong. Um, is this figure based on a the survey conducted on well, with all the banks uh, in Hong Kong? Um, uh, we can see the four different colors here for gray, it means no implementation vector. Light blue on currently um, selecting some vendors. Uh, deep blue is on POC, proof of concept. And uh, dark purple is on the fully implemented. From looking at the color, we can see the um, most banks, all banks in general have the 30, around 32% of the bank have a fully implemented rag tag. And uh, with those banks, we have uh, higher, more access, it's more than the $100 billion than the uh, is almost which 50% have implemented red tech. We break it down into some business model. Um, virtual banks have a higher tendency to use red tech than some uh, traditional bank. Uh, when you try to break down into exercises, uh, 
the more the bank have more access and more willing to uh, work on RegTech. And in terms of headquarters, um, if the headquarters of the bank is in the U.S. and um, tend to be um, make uh, RegTech more acceptable. Um, these figures try to show some prioritization of risk and compliance application areas. Uh, on the X axis, we can see the six uh, area of application we mentioned before. And the column, you can see the, from the right to the left, from the right is on the, the monitoring and POC stage. Uh, the middle column is on the, the prepare to implement. And the first column is on the ready now. As, as we can see, the, um, for the ready now part, fighting uh, financial crisis is uh, more urgent. And, uh, and also on risk management, um, people are more accepting on these two main area. So this is so does uh, a general direct adoption process. Basically, we uh, uh, mainly use the design thinking process, also the agile process. Um, first, we try to identify the opportunities, uh, what's the main problem in the, in the industry, and then we try to uh, quantify the problem. Uh, let's say, um, divert some kind of the metrics to measure the performance, or, or um, do collect requirement on the expectation, and then validate, try to build some concept solution and validate it. And then the fourth day, the stage is on the develop the solution, and five days, five stages on the deploying the solution. This is a quite standard uh, adoption process. So, um, in fact, for correct tech, uh, for most of the financial institution, they can they implement it in two ways. One is on the um, rely on the, the in house staff to the develop the solution for themselves. Or they may hire some third party company to do it. If uh, they try to hire some in house uh, staff to do it, it allows a greater level of customization. It can also help train their the staff and expand their skill sets as well. Uh, time, resources, and effort spent in developing solution from scratch can be very significant. But we try to consider some third party solution that helps save a lot of time and resources. It also allowed to provide some, um, the bank with comfort of the proving track record. Um, the third party vendors uh, typically process uh, some domain expertise, say AI, they can, um, which bank can leverage to uh, assist with implementation. So in this figure, we can see the um, most bank we have already uh, adopt some third party vector solution providers or, or partially adopt some of the third party provider and work together with the in house staff. So, in total, 61% of the vector solution are using third party providers. So, um, this is a, a few examples that uh, the regulator uh, facing the financial sales compliance. So this is some example that uh, some banks got some fine, large amount of fine, let's say 40, uh, $400 million, uh, $10 million on some uh, um, fin uh, financing sales issues. So we can see that the fine is super huge. So the, we can we, when you look at this problem, we can see the human to human communication is the key for sales compliance. Uh, most compliance risks such as for detection can actually be solved systematically already by using big data. But many of the most severe com uh, compliance issues remain in the human to human communication. Um, when something go wrong here, things can turn really bad. This also showed uh, some um, com uh, common challenges in this in sales compliance. When you look at this pyramid, from the bottom is uh, the um, relations manager. Let's say some relation manager in the bank. Um, when they do compliance, they need to check a lot of documents. They need to spend a lot of time on it. 
uh, when they sell different products, they may need to go through different kind of compliance rules. This is very hard to do, in fact. Uh, up, when we have up one up level, we have the first and second line of defense, the supervisor of, manage, uh, with the, of the manager. They need to review uh, all the sales recalling. In fact, uh, it's very hard to uh, examine all the recording. They may only able to sample some of them. This also um, incurred high labor costs. For the top management, um, in fact, um, they cannot have an overview of what the potential compliance is if they don't have enough data on the exam or the sales recording from the uh, first and second line of dependence. So um, I explained the, uh, the current situation, I give the overview of RECTAC. In the second part, I will try to tell you the final labs. Uh, Fenton is actually located in Hong Kong. So um, I gave me a very brief introduction to Hong Kong. Hong Kong is uh, located in the southeastern part of China. It's a um, uh, metropolitan area, a special administrative region of China. It has around 75 million people living here. Um, I can say that Hong Kong is a place for East, Midwest, West. So right now it's um, a part of China uh, before 97 is uh, actually the British colony. So in Hong Kong, we using um, the um, I have a unique law. It's called Basic Law, and uh, for uh, applied by from, from the common law. So um, we have a very very um, well structured finance, uh, very well financial structure. And um, in fact, uh, Hong Kong is ranked number four in the, the financial center in the world, after New York, London, and Shanghai. So because uh, we're focusing on the languages in AI, um, so let me tell you some the language status in, uh, in Hong Kong. So in Hong Kong, the, we speak Cantonese, we mix languages, like, like this. So it's a kind of the mixing Cantonese with English. We also speak uh, English. Okay, thank you. And also, I need to verify your Hong Kong ID card number six digit in the middle. Okay, thank you, Manifest. And then yes. also one more information to uh, verify. So you can see that um, most people in Hong Kong speaking English with some kind of accents, not pure um, uh, British or uh, US accents. Uh, we also speak Mandarin, definitely. So in this example. So you see that uh, some pe um, most people in Hong Kong also speak Mandarin with some kind of accent as well. So um, Fellow Labs is in fact a spin-off from the University of Hong Kong we have spent six years um, to, uh, um, to establish uh, our commercial uh, activities from our research lab. And uh, we have do decade research. In our lab, we do decade research on the AI related um, research. So right now, we have the certain uh, more than 30, uh, 35 regulators, government departments, and enterprise customers. We also recognize as a uh, designated local research institute by the Hong Kong government. So um, that means uh, we are doing hardcore research instead of just using some est um, established technologies. So we do um, have some uh, quite some achievement award, particularly on the 2020, we got the Hong Kong ICT FinTech Award. And uh, in 2021, we uh, become a winner of the, the Hong Kong Mentory of 40 Global Re uh, Red Tech Challenge. So um, we have customers in banking, insurance, airline, telco, um, government, retail. Uh, we have our system can process more than 100 million, uh, uh, million 500 hours of audio a year. We're serving uh, 10, um, 10 million customers, 
Uh, we are um, helping uh, customers to grow annually the 400 times, uh, 400%. So here's some uh, track record ourselves. Uh, we also have a very strong R&D force. Uh, we hire um, PhD, uh, PhD researcher uh, from uh, or, or scientists from the very uh, renowned institutes like the Berkeley uh, National uh, Singapore University, Cambridge, Imperial. Uh, of course, we include that um, some the university in Hong Kong as well, like uh, Hong Kong U, Chinese U, uh, Hong Kong UST as well. So we are surfing the regulator. We are surfing the Banks. So here's some of the example. So I'll just give you some very brief introduction to our final labs. Then I'll try to explain the technologies we use. So basically, we um, um, technology in four and uh, five aspects. The first one is on the speech recognition. So we have the very high to accurate speed recognition. Um, for the mixed languages, which is particularly useful in Hong Kong. We also do the speaker dialization. Um, this enable the, um, this helps a lot in some mono recording. I'll tell you a little bit more later. On speaker vocation, uh, we rely on test independent speaker vocation. That means uh, we don't need to uh, rely on the text for, to do speaker vocation. We do NLP. So natural language processing. Um, so, and uh, we also do uh, speech synthesis um, with, uh, uh, with um, mixed languages as well. So let me tell you one, each one of them one by one. For speech recognition, it actually means we try to convert speech into the corresponding transcription. Let's say I'm saying, how's the weather today? Then going to the speech recognizer, then you turn return the text. How's the word day? So um, the actually ability of a machine program to identify words and phrases in spoken language and convert them into a machine readable format. Um, and uh, in our uh, speech recognition engine, uh, we support mixed languages. We also support, uh, besides major languages like Mandarin, English, we also support minor languages like Cantonese, um, uh, Thai, uh, uh, Indonesia, Bahasa, uh, Arabic, and we definitely support Hong Kong style Cantonese. So, um, so this is an example of Cantonese to trying to show that you have a mix Chinese and, uh, and English together. And uh, in fact, in Thai, we also encounter some kind of mixed language scenario. Um, traditionally, when we do, uh, try to build a the automatic speech recognition engine, ASR, we need to go through the um, multiple steps. We need to build the um, lexicon language model uh, and um, acoustic model. And then so I try to build this different, different component together to build up the ASL engine. And uh, it would take normally um, six to nine months and the accuracy maybe give you 7% based on our experience. But we are adopting a end-to-end uh, -end model. I guess uh, you're doing ASL research, end-to-end um, uh, -end ASL is a, is a hot topic right now. So we build everything all together and combine it all together into the single model. So it takes us much short time. We, we can uh, build up a new ASL model for Leo language in two months. It gives high accuracy up to 90% as well. Um, we support uh, multiple channels, even on smartphone, on laptop, on, on, on telephones, radio, robot. And this is important because um, and uh, on some of the channel, let's say from the, the traditional telephone channel, the sound quality normally is very low. And the sampling rate is maybe up to um, 8K or even lower. This means the speech quality, the sound quality is very low. It um, makes a lot of changes to the ASL engine. 
we have overcome this problem and build down our ASR, we can work on the low quality speech. Of course, we all work for high quality speech as well. So another important component in uh, speech recognition is voice activity detection. And it, it identified silence part and the, the versus the noisy part. So we are more focused on the speech and ignore the noisy part and identify the speech segment from the start and beginning. We also uh, do the automate, uh, automated um, punctuation. So if we just transcribe uh, speech into text, it may give you something like, um, uh, like this example uh, without any punctuation. But if we can put the punctuation in the right, right way, then it can help improve a lot on the readability. So this example is in English, this example is in Chinese, Cantonese, they in fact uh, carry the same meaning. Um, we built in multiple political for speech uh, punctuation so that we can put punctuation in the right way, in the intelligent way. Um, and the components of speaker dialization, it actually uh, tried to ask the question of who spoke when. It's a process to partitioning the input audio like this into some homogeneous segments, like uh, according to the speaker identity. Let's say in this example, convert this normal tone uh, uh, speech segment into and divide it based on the speaker. You can, in this example, we have three speaker, speaker A, speaker first, and then speaker B, and then speaker C and A and B again, based on the identity. And um, for speaker dialization, it actually com um, consists of three parts. With the raw audio coming in, we first do the speaker detect speech detection. We detect the speech part against the non-speech part. And then go through the segmentation. We find the speaker change points in the audio stream. And then we do clustering. We try to group the uh, speech, uh, speech segment based on the speaker characteristic. And other technologies on the natural language processing, uh, as, you, as you note, when you try to um, explain or speak in something, we may uh, explain in very different way. For example, when you try to talk about loose card, um, some people may say, I can't find my credit card, what can I do? And some may say, I lose my credit card, where can I report a loose card? And um, some may say, I don't know where my credit card is. And there are many different kind of expression on uh, losing your credit card. So um, with NLP, we um, try to um, understand they in fact carry the same intention or the intent it related to the lost card, the entities about the credit card, and um, is it related to the personal banking, what's the sentiment, then so we use the NLP to work on the text after we transcribe from the speech using automatic speech recognition. So we can also auto detect languages. If we put in Chinese, we respond in Chinese. If we put in English, we respond in English. Um, NLP, we need to support uh, intent classification. As I explained before, for different for the same intent, we can have many different expressions. So we need to teach the engine how to um, group different expressions together to uh, for a particular intent. We also support uh, multi-intent classification. So in a particular uh, utterance, people uh, may express more than one intent. Like this, like this example, uh, I haven't pre-ordered the item. When can it be shipped? But now I don't want it anymore. In fact, carry two intent. One is on order, requesting the um, uh, order status. Another one is on order cancel. So we also do intent clustering. Uh, whenever we enter some new intent, we do unsupervised learning on the new intent and try to group them together into clusters. 
and then we suggest the new the cluster new form cluster back to the our the original data with the new knowledge and then we try to improve uh, we do the um, training again and then try to learn the new cluster is how we uh, handle uh, intent clustering and then one is on the entity extraction sometimes uh, we need to when you try to understand the task, we need to understand entity. Let's say in this example, uh, PS help transfer um, a thousand US dollars to Amigo. So from this task, uh, you need to extract that USD is related to currency, a thousand related to the mine, Amigo is in fact the account. Uh, we also have sentiment analysis. Some words um, have neutral sentiment, some with negative, some with positive. For example, any recommendation, we buy, I want to return, I want to apply, to a kind of neutral sentiment. But for negative, let's say, I want to talk to your supervisor. Um, is there anything, uh, anything go wrong? So it's quite negative, so you need to identify there's something wrong here. For positive, we say the serv some people will say the service is good, we have excellent services, thank you very much, it's a positive expression. So we can do the same analysis on, on the text and try to understand um, what's the behavior of, of the speakers. So the next one is speaker verification. Um, we rely on text independent with verification. As I've been before, uh, we don't need to actually require the speaker to speak on a particular text. It can speak anything. It's important because it can carry liveliness in it. So let's say, um, um, in, uh, in fact, in enabled voice is a password, you can make the, um, the system more secure. And um, it also helps to support uh, KYC, know your customer. Uh, for speaker location, it in fact uh, have two um, main steps. The first one is on enrollment. Enrollment means try to register your uh, voice print. So in this is it's showing an example. Um, this and a re uh, relation manager, relation manager talking to a customer over the phone. So it may say, um, hello, we have launched uh, a voice print authentication service. Uh, you can choose to use the voice as a password to reduce the time for identified authentication and make our service more convenient and secure. Do you need to register your voice screen? And then if the customer say yes, then during this conversation, in fact, we have already registered. Uh, we don't need to really re uh, rely on the content, but we just need to identify the characteristic of this the voice from the customer. During this process, we may need around 60 seconds audio from the customer, then we can successfully enroll um, the voice print for all the customer. Um, after uh, enrollment, we come to the second step, is on verification. This example shows you successful verification scenario. I'm oh, sorry, you see, okay. Um, so in this example, the LM try to say, hello, can I, can you please provide your bank account number? And the customer try to provide account, let's say, my account number is blah, blah, blah. And if during this conversation, the LM check that um, the voice print is correct, it matches the customer to enroll the voice print. And uh, then also the content, the response is also correct. Then you give it a pass. Normally it would take five to second five to eight seconds of audio from the customer, you need to verify whether the, the identity of the customer. Um, then this uh, show you some unsuccessful verification. I'm sorry, you see, sorry to put it in Chinese. And in this example, um, we may say the, in this, uh, sorry, can you please provide the last four digit of your uh, ID number, the IMZ, then the uh, Forster cannot mention the the, um, the four digit of the ID of, of, of the pretender customer. So in this process, the voice screen doesn't match and also the content doesn't match, then um, 
we return unsuccessful cases. Then in this case, we need to fall back to the human to do the verification, the traditional way. The next one is on the speech synthesis. Um, that means we try to do the text to speech, how to convert text into speech. Uh, into speech. This can give the, a very nice um, customer experience when you try to use some particular surface because when you try to speak text, uh, try to speak in speech, and then the machine or system try to respond in speech as well. So in our TTS, it support mixed languages, even uh, for um, different, let's say for Chinese and uh, English, you can also speak in the same voice. And uh, we need to do the text normalization. Um, when, when you see some numbers, we can just directly read it out. We understand the content based on the text, based on the, the, the content. Let's say the mature date is uh, 1 6 stroke, 1 2 stroke, 2027. You need to understand it and make it like normalize it, make it like the mature date is uh, 16th of December 2021. Uh, we also allow the user uh, dictionary. You allow business user or the IT team to customize the pronunciation of some words because um, for some word it may not speak in the in the normal way. Um, we can we allow customization there. We also allow custom voice, so we can tailor made voice for um, for a particular enterprise. Um, this is a uh, example of our uh, TTS, and uh, let me play one for the English. Designed for the modern investor, Securities Account features combined flexible control with everyday convenience to help you make the best decision every time. Markets available include Hong Kong Stock Market and Shanghai Hong Kong Stock Connect. Um, because uh, we relied on AI, so we make it lot more like a human. We, uh, sometimes we may very hard to differentiate whether it's speaking by an AI or by the machine uh, or by a, a human. Okay, so next slide. And the next part, I try to explain the solution we provide based on the technology I, we, uh, I just explained. The first one is uh, so called the Colinta. Is actually a speech analysis solution. So basically, what we're trying to do with Colander is we try to um, use a system to analyze a lot of uh, audio recordings. Let's say from in a in a um, call centers, we have the thousand uh, thousand hours of um, uh, recordings um, every month. And um, sometimes it's very hard to uh, ask human to listen all of them and to, to, to do the compliance or do the checking. Uh, we may only rely on some sampling, but with our machine, we can use AI to listen to all of the uh, recordings and turn all the speech into text and use stylization. We can split it into the, the agent side or the customer side. Um, this can help uh, manage the quality uh, enable uh, compliance check and also provide his, um, business insights. So before um, we have this solution, we may need to, uh, after we have mentioned before, after we have the, all the recording, we only sample one, some of them. We try to examine all of the recording is a, sometimes it's a, very, it's a nightmare. We have a solution, we can use AI to understand all the speech because uh, we turn on speaking the text and use NLP to understand the content, this can give you uh, a report easily, give you some insight as well. So how the, the this speech analysis work for work? Um, so after we have some voice recordings, we use speech to text, that means uh, uh, automatic speech recognition, uh, with speaker uh, separation, we convert speech into text, transcribe text based on the speaker. And then we based on some business logic, we build a different scorecard uh, on particular um, topic that the, the user want to use. Let's say 
for KYC, we build a scorecard for the uh, KYC in my, in, uh, related topics, and then use our NLP, then based on some intent, classification, uh, entity extraction, and other NLP technology, we can give the score for different scorecard and pro pro uh, produce a report. Uh, let me give you a the video to show how it works. In speech analytics platform, speech recognition engine transcribes all conversation between agents and customers into text. And they all sorry, this example in in uh, in Mandarin. In fact, uh, about uh, uh, way some. Uh, annual fee for credit card, but uh, we can see the English transcription. So you can see that uh, it's in fact a uh, uh, direct transcription of the speech in the text, and you see that it supports uh, multi-languages. We can also easily search for the audio based on the keywords we want to look up. For example, complaint cases. By leveraging natural language processing, we can understand why the customers are calling us, what are their intentions. The system can also automatically classify the nature of the calls so that we can identify any potential sales opportunity. At the same time, it can also help us to identify any cause with potential risk, for example, breaching the compliance. We provide tools for you to easily locate these high-risk calls so that you can catch them before the regulators do. Okay, this uh, gives you a very high overview about uh, this uh, speech and analytic product. Um, uh, this platform has uh, several features. First, we support transcription, support mo uh, mixed languages transcription. It uh, supports the target code chain. So the, um, when the live agent using system, the uh, supervisor can uh, instantly provide the support to the agents to the respond to customer's uh, question. Uh, we provide compliance check and identify the potential risk using the, our SR and NLU. Uh, and um, you can also help assess the performance of the speaker, let's say for the agents, whether um, they have to go through all the required steps, whether the agent do the greeting, uh, whether they have polite or not. We also do the business promotion uh, because we can uncover some po uh, potential sales opportunities. We are not understand the emotion, uh, you can do the emotion analysis, you can detect the behavior or the emotion of the customers so, so that it can improve the services. Um, this is the uh, system architecture. When call goes in uh, or streaming goes in, then we go for uh, the a uh, API the gateway. I mentioned before, API is important, so uh, we use API. And then uh, we use our speech processor um, and also a voice print to do the voice um, voice biometric and also convert speech and text. For the, so the text, generate text, we have uh, the intent server, entity server, uh, text pattern server, and sentiment server to identify the intent, the entity, uh, any speech pattern, and also these uh, analyze the sentiment. And then we turn to, uh, based on the, the, the scorecard, we develop based on the business and um, insight and uh, requirement and then gender report. And the mentioned before is support voice search and um, if we type the keywords you know, in the platform, we can definitely identify which particular segment of, uh, of the recording contained a particular keyword. Um, it can also provide business insights. So 
what is the hot topic uh, in um, this set of recordings in this month when compared to the previous month? What is the business trend? And give you this kind of insight. Give the report in different forms. Uh, we can also edit uh, the event, uh, uh, event detection. Um, we made uh, in this um, in this example, we are talking about verify. Uh, we set up a um, business rule uh, to verify customer information, and then and, uh, this can instruct our, our NLP, NLP's um, uh, model to uh, identify the corresponding intent. It can also support uh, identify potential risk. So, um, so in, in in this example, in sport, uh, some of the um, call may contain some uh, um, whiskey word or is uh, or whiskey speech segment. So we can identify, it, put a flag into it, and then let the supervisor to examine the call. It can also support uh, real-time monitoring. So a lot of agents are trying to, to talk in real-time. Supervisor can actually monitor what's actually going on with each of the agent. And then um, whenever does something go wrong, the, age, uh, the supervisor can jump in and then help uh, the particular service for a particular, for a particular customer. And um, this is uh, show you how we identify some compliance risks with these um, speech analytic cues. The first step, we try to train the robot to learn the characteristic of the compliance policy. Uh, we need to, the, first, we need to, based on the business requirement or the compliance policy, we try to define the business rules. And then we examine some of the recordings and then use our speech to text engine, transcribe all those text, uh, speech into text, and then examine the transcript. Using this kind of data, we trained our engine to understand the characteristic of the, um, um, the compliance risk in this uh, particular um, customer. And the second step, um, after we use a uh, we use a robot to the identify calls with potential risk and compliance intent, and um, so um, after we train the model, we can use the model to the listen to all the calls, process everything, and then identify some risky uh, transcription and identify the, any compliance breaching any compliance rules. Um, after identified a subset of these uh, com uh, recordings, then they may uh, pass it to the compliance team to review them. So what's the benefit in that? It actually can uh, examine all the calls without just sampling some of them. Um, it can reduce the number of the compliance officers needed um, because most of the job has been done by the machine, and um, we can also support uh, proactive detecting of any problems so that it can avoid a lawsuit or heavy fine from the regulators. It can also help improve the, the, imp uh, the impact on the, the, reduce the impact of the company reputation. If you have uh, some problems uh, with the any compliance issues sometimes we hurt the reputation of the company. Um, is this example is show a, a use case for a better customer experience. Um, so in uh, in the general uh, general form, uh, we have the uh, an agent when you try to receive a complaint case, then the agent need to justify it. Uh, where there is a really need to pass it on to a special agent, this will involve some uh, human judgment. And uh, sometimes the information maybe is interpreted and then create, create some the bad customer experience. After using a system, 
So after a uh, general agent received the call, then the supervisor and actually examine what's happening and then and try to get prepared to assign the call to a, a the specialized agent. This can help the detect complaint um, proactively and then we will try this incur less waiting time as well. So another solution is on the, we call the Ultima. It's a, in fact, an outbound code application. It will be useful for debt collection on the, tel, the telemarketing, some kind of warm call, cold call. We are also on compliance as well. Um, how you can help with compliance? So well, let us say in the bank, um, when the customer, uh, when you try to check the, the uh, the credit card history of the customer, we find some the fraud, potential fraud cases. The call center may need to call the customer to verify whether there's a, some suspicious, uh, suspicious transaction. Then uh, we actually can uh, use the machine to call uh, the customer directly to verify it, whether there's some, uh, some problem with the transactions. And um, this is some of the pain point normally we encounter for outbound call. Um, they easily get breach of compliance. Uh, the agents may not perform good enough. Um, sometimes it's a low call list. The agent may be, uh, get tired and have low performance. Uh, agent may have long working hours. They hire a lot of calls to um, let the agent to, to make their outbound calls. And sometimes uh, we have very high turnover rates. The, uh, the work, um, the agents made, uh, we sign and then we hire again. Sometimes hiring can become very difficult. Um, so the, let me give you a, a case study on compliance using the open call scenarios. So the blue box is for voice board. The purple box is for the customer. Uh, let's say, uh, hello, I'm uh, Sophia, your investment product assistant. Uh, based on your chosen investment product, we need to verify some information with you. Uh, may I know if the transaction amount is less than 20% of your personal net worth? And um, if the customer responds, uh, yes, less than 20%, then the, um, the customer say, okay, um, understand is less than 20%. We are now confirmed the transaction based on instruction. Then everything go, go past. And then you may continue to ask if anything we can help you. Then if, um, if yes, then we have a, we may assign a investment a, a advisor to help you. If no, then we say to confirm it with goodbye. We go to another branch. Uh, if the transaction is higher than 20%, then the Rolls Royce board may try to reply, understand um, it is more than 20%, but based on the information recorded in our bank, and you have uh, certain um, experience on investment. So uh, then if this is correct, then you say reply yes, and if it's no, then reply no. So based on the customer's response, then we can further proceed see whether um, we should um, uh, further continue the transactions. This example shows you that we don't necessarily need a human in order to do this kind of compliance check when uh, we encounter some transaction problem with the customer. We can actually hire a voice bot to do all the jobs. And uh, the voice bot can actually use speech and intact with the customer so that uh, maybe the cus uh, customer is doesn't aware that uh, the, he's actually talking to a robot. Um, this is a the system architecture for the this uh, open call services. Call go in, go through the PSI uh, TN, the telephone network, go through the IP uh, PBACs, and then then we send the zip chunk to our server, and then we go through our um, switch recognition and uh, uh, voice to detection engine, and then turn the everything into speech and then use our natural language processing engine to understand the content. 
And then we identified uh, any possible intent or action we need, and then identify any batching event uh, using uh, LS uh, NL SML, um, like you like you like sentiment makeup language, and then use um, the um, RTP protocol to respond. This is quite a standard loop uh, when you interact with a phone system. The next one is on the, um, it's called the focal pins on speaker location. As I mentioned before, a system with um, a technology relied on test independent speaker location. And uh, we can use a voice pin uh, to, to do speak, uh, identity verification. Um, basically, it composed of two parts. It based on something you know and something you have. The voice is something you have. And the content or the speech is something you know. Based on if two things is correct, then it's quite sure that um, it could uh, the identity of the can can get a pass. So this example shows you how it works. <laughs> Hello, I'm a current customer of your bank, and recently I'm planning to open up my small business uh, nearby Causeway Bay. So my Hello, I would like to find out about the progress of my loan applications. My application number is 1234. I submitted my... Okay, so this uh, um, um, realistic scenario is showing how the speaker vacation work without uh, with the um, test in, uh, independent speaker vacation. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, we need to go through first, uh, second uh, two steps. One is on enrollment, and show this before, and the second part is on uh, verification. We have successful verification. We have uh, unsuccessful verification. I showed this already. And uh, we also support enrollment via uh, live conversation. So, okay, let me have someone in, in, uh, yeah, someone in English. So, um, in the actual conversation between the agent and customer, in fact, uh, we have already record the voice print of the customer. We just need uh, the customer to the, um, confirm that we use this kind of voice print service. We don't, this provide a um, voice print registration seamlessly. Uh, this can um, help customer have a better experience on this physical verification process. So when you're trying to do authentication uh, via live conversation, when you try to, a customer try to talk to an agent, um, let's say the customer try to um, do a transaction and then the agent try to respond to the customer uh, about the content during this conversation, we actually already passed through uh, the speaker location part. So if the voice print match, then the identity of, go, uh, of connection go through. Otherwise, we get rejected and uh, go through traditional way um, using the security questions, something like this. So um, 
uh, this is uh, we have mentioned several um, solution we provide. Let me recap a little bit. Uh, I showed this figure before, um, and um, for sales compliance challenges, we have challenges from really, uh, the low level, uh, relatively low level relations manager. They need to the manually uh, drive the different compliance pro procedures. It become very tedious sometimes. And at one level up, uh, the supervisor of the relation manager need to review, uh, need to the examine, the check uh, the recordings. Is also uh, incur some high level call for senior management. They do not have an overview of what's happening about any potential compliance breaches. So uh, sometimes the timely compliance feedback from religious um, manager is important. And uh, with our live recording, we can give the analysis immediately so the uh, religious manager can understand is if there are any missing steps during the conversation between uh, the, uh, with the customer. So if there anything go wrong, then you can our uh, system spot it out, and then the relation manager can uh, try to uh, do something to help or we do some of the process to eliminate those risks. This has also provide uh, faster compliance check from, from the supervisor of the relations manager because we have everything automatically transcribed uh, for all the recordings. Then um, I think can, that we can also generate report. Then the manager or higher management can easily understand what's happening with regarding the uh, compliance issues. So, so this also gives a holistic risk overview to the senior management. We can tell the, what the actually total transaction amount we have, uh, any pro, uh, any abnormal recording. We, we, we have and uh, what is top um, and um, transaction uh, risk we, we do uh, they have and um, any particular features or some problem so any problem with the KYC uh, any uh, pro problem with the uh, suitability so this can give the city management a holistic view um, so this uh, show a particular use case, and uh, we can automatically uh, trans um, do the compliance check with all the phone calls and the uh, branch sales activities between customer and the religious manager. Uh, this can help save the seventy percent of the uh, cost on supervising uh, the the staff, and also check all the staff. Um, 10 times or 20 times faster. And uh, the new uh, staff training cost can reduce by 50%. Um, normally, uh, we can do checking at a low cost. We rely on human before. Uh, when you try to hire a the compliance officer to do the compliance check, the hourly rate may be $500 per hour. But using a system, we can reduce five times reduced to the $100 per hour. We can do something faster as well. We rely on human to examine the call. Let's say examine one hour recordings. In fact, it may take you up to four hours to, to, to actually examine the details. Um, because sometimes when you listen to the call, when you're missing something, we need to replay again. You use multiple time uh, of the recordings. But we're using machine. Uh, everything can do much faster. Um, uh, in based on the experience, we can take the less than an hour to process them and an hour, an hour audios. If we need faster, we just use a faster machine to do it. So the, in this talk, uh, we are use some of the material uh, from this white paper. It's something on Wikipedia, and. Uh, um, this is the end of my talk to see if you, you, you guys have any questions.
Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, uh, wonderful talk by Dr. Albert. Uh, I have uh, one question over here. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Akila, what are the limitations that can occur in implementing the real world, sec real world secure system based on RegTech? Uh, the real world situation of RegTech? Hello? So, Hello? Um, sorry, can you do my say, say, that, say, say that again? Okay. What are the limitations that can occur in implementing real-world secure system based on RegTech? Oh, okay. So, um, there are several issues. Um, first is the adoption of the uh, technologies. Um, sometimes uh, some of the financial institutions may... Uh, may not be willing to use technology, they may be, uh, trust uh, AI, but uh, getting uh, more and more people try to uh, trust the technology because we've proven, we've proved that uh, technology works. And uh, some depends on the, uh, on the, um, the cost, because uh, um, we, we try to, uh, to build a solution with the uh, rec tag, you need to um, uh, spend some money or uh, to to train the in-house staff, the IT staff to do the system or hire a third party um, company to do that. Then it in incurs some extra cost and some bank may, uh, may be reluctant to uh, spend some money on that. Um, but again, the situation is getting better and better. Yeah. I, as I showed in some of the previous slides, uh, we are getting more uh, people have the direct tech uh, acceptance mm -hmm. and uh, more financial institutions actually um, uh, try to implement more direct tech solution from the, the purely POC stage up to now is ready implementation stage. Okay, uh, one more question from again. Ms. Will the yeah. basic system have significant changes in application in different sector based on hardware requirement? Um, uh, for hardware requirement, yeah, yes. If you do need uh, fast processing and you may need a uh, better machine, uh, as you know, for machine learning, we rely on the GPUs. So you may need a high, high level of uh, GPU to make the, um, the machine learning, also the processing faster. When it particularly come to speech recognition, the requirement even harder than the, the, the text. So it depends on whether the system implement real time or uh, offline. For real time, we even need um, um, a better specification on the machine as well. So it really depends on the application. Okay, uh, one more question from uh, Jiyong Park. Thank you very much. I have a question about speech diarizations. What mm -hmm. happens if the voice overlaps at the same time in the speech diarizations process? How can it differentiate between the silence between the words from one person and between the different people? Um, in fact, uh, for overlapping, first we need to do the overlap detection. There's a particular piece of words called the overlapping detection. And then we need to use uh, speech separation to separate um, the, the speaker's voice. So with this kind of step, then we uh, uh, go through the dialization again, then we can uh, separate overlap speech. So we need some kind of more detailed implementation in, in order to handle the overlap speech. Uh, okay, until now, no any further questions. In the meantime, I have one that's very small. As you mentioned, the money laundering, anti-money laundering, and what do you think the, the, in, the risk indicators for the money laundering and that can be uh, tackled with the, your uh, system, the processes you mentioned over here? Say, for example, let me give you an example mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, 
they are the business are uh, trading between the different vendors the different countries so and uh, say for example uh, when once it depends on the kyc so mm-hmm. what information given uh, you know in the bank or and then uh, it may be uh, look some suspicious or different uh, than the given in the kyc or uh, so how how would it work in 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 uh, in the system okay so um so kyc is uh, uh understand your customer uh so uh know your customers so um so let's say that a the person open the bank account maybe the, it pass anything to someone else to use it maybe use it for money laundering and then this may create a lot of risk to um to the bank or some financial institution if we use let's say speak verification when you do anything all transaction we know actually the the person who speak is actually the actual customer then we can tell um we can prevent some of the uh KYC risk uh or the money laundering risk doing that way so basically we need to verify the identity make sure everything or every time the same person try to uh uh same customer using the the, the account not someone else okay so there's no any anybody have any question uh, it looks there no any further questions uh, our uh, list of honor mr amit dr amit kumar uh, he i think uh, he is he wants to leave because he needs to attend uh, clap Thank you, Dr. Amit Kumar, for your presence. Uh, please, if you want, you can leave. If you have any other any engagement, thank you very much with us today. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you all. Thank you for the wonderful talk, Albert. Thank you. Thank you. First, uh, our uh, audience, our participants, to please give your feedback for this uh, presentation. This is the uh, QR code. You may scan this QR code, and uh, and there's also the URL given in the chat box. You can give us the, your feedback. It's very important for us, so we may improve. Or uh, this is the next webinar in a more better way. So now here with us today is Professor Dr. Michael Ong. He is uh, you know uh, going to give us the closing remarks for today's talk. Mr. Michael Ong received the PhD degree from the University of Birmingham in 1996. Science and Engineering Research Council UK grants an institution of electrical electrical engineers post graduate scholarship. From 1992 to 1994, uh, Mr. Michael Ong was a research associate with the University of Birmingham. Then, from 1996 to 1999, he was with Singapore Telecom as a network planner and project manager for Singapore's first digital turnkey radio system. He was the senior scientist with the Institute of Institute for Infocom Research, where he also was the program manager for the Smart Nation program and principal investigator for more than 15 grant and industry projects. His research interest, including radio over fiber, ultra wideband, and millimeter wave technologies, he was an adjunct associate professor with the National University of Singapore. So we request Michael Ong to please. Uh, Say uh, something about and uh, uh, thanks and remar- closing remarks for our today's webinar. What do you care? Yeah. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Pakash, for your kind introduction. First and foremost, I would like to thank Dr. Lam for this very interesting talk and the panelists for their valuable contribution to our R10 talk. I would also like to thank the attendees who have helped to make this R10 talk such a successful event and. Uh, Dr. Lam has enlightened us with the Pinotech use of AI technology to drive automation and overcome challenges in the management of regulatory processes. We truly understand the complexity of uh, speech recognition and processing, especially when the language spoken in Hong Kong is in English, Mandarin, and Cantonese. This is the same situation in multiracial Singapore. Did you know that 
the national language is Bahasa Melayu in Singapore. Besides this, English, Chinese, Malay, Indian, particularly Tamils, is, are also spoken in uh, Singapore. Besides these languages, we have the Chinese dialect, Hokkien, Cantonese, Teochew, Hakka, and etc. So, um, and in our institute, we took a few years to conduct the translation of the languages into the local context with the slang, the ex, uh, accent, using NLP. So it, it, it took us a long time to do this process. And in, in Singapore, and the Singapore government is using RegTech to promote the adoption and integration of technology solution in the risk management and compliance function of financial institution. And this will help them to evaluate processes and capabilities and also encourage a vibrant red tech ecosystem. So it, it was a pleasure listening to your talk and on behalf of Region 10, we would like to present you with an e-momento. Kindly uh, accept this virtual momento from IEEE Region 10. Dr. Lam? Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for your talk today. So next next slide, please. Thank you. So, uh, once again, I would like to thank uh, Prof. Pakash for moderating this uh, speech. Uh, sorry, this seminar. Um, I would like to thank Savita and uh, her team in organizing the R10 talk. So chair, as chair of R10 Young Professional Activities Committee, Savita have brought in very new initiative to, to engage the younger crowd. And R10 is now active in social media platform and is no longer boring in our long meetings. This R10 uh, talk in the uh, pursuit of excellence would not be possible without the diligent effort of Savita and ME teams. And I would like to mention the guidance of the leadership uh, department. Zia, yeah, Zia, Takao, Prof. Akash, uh, Professor Sanjay, Savita, Amy, and Jennifer. So I would like uh, this series of talk is the combined effort of uh, Prof. Sanjay, Industry Relationship Committee, Prof. Pakash, Professional Activity Committee, Savita's Young YP Committee, uh, Amy's Women in Engineering Committee, and Jennifer's uh, Student Activity Committee. Thank you for inviting me to this talk, and I look forward to more IEEE R10 talk. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Michael uh, for this uh, closing remarks. Before I move forward, there's a one question uh, from the speaker uh, from uh, Viraj Sohalia. What is the full form of NSLML? NSLML. Semantic. Oh, this um, it's called lecho language semantic ma uh, markup language. Okay, thank you. Let me. Uh, I can reply to in the um, the chat. Okay, thank you very much. So the participants can join uh, with us uh, on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. We will access uh, these. Uh, now, our upcoming webinar is we are fortunate enough that the president IEEE and CEO IEEE fellow, Susan Cathy Land, has, you know, give her consents. Uh, she will talk on IEEE is an, is an internet dominated world on October 2, 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. IST GMT 530. So we request all the participants to please get register yourself. This is, this would be a wonderful talk from our president. 
and i'm sure you guys have uh, filled the uh, feedback form and uh, thank you very much again if those who have not yet uh, filled the feedback form please do so this will really help us to improve our, ourselves for the next webinars okay now it's the time for a group photo i would request uh, all the participants and the panelists to please uh, turn on their cameras so and uh, miss um, akila would you like to take a picture emmy will take on behalf of us <laughs> oh emmy please yeah. hey so oh uh, let's take a pic One, two, three. Two. One more. <laughs> One, two, three. Smile. Two. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, oh. one more. One more. The new is coming. Okay. The new. Again, please the new. Again, again, the new. Okay. One more. So one, two, three. Smile. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Albert. Thank you, Dr. Om. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, Akila. Thank you, Rini. Thank you, Amy, for your efforts, your you know times for today's uh, talks. It was really wonderful and nice talk uh, by Dr. Albert. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Albert. See you guys on October second. 6 p.m. again with our president. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. okay bye. Bye. Emmy San. Emmy San. Hello, Mike. How are you? <laughs> Long how time never see you. Yeah. Uh, how are you? <laughs> Hope you are doing well. In in Singapore, yeah. COVID is rise rising now. Rising? Wow! It's increasing. Oh wow! Oh. So today is a record. Today is a record number since the beginning. Record it. <laughs> it's a record now. Oh. Okay. Yeah. What about in Japan? Japan is a uh, better now. <laughs> now coming down. Yeah. Yes. Uh,